welcome to the show. Movies by the letter. The one you've you all know been what it is. For. You've been waiting all week. You've been, been chopping the. I know nails, you watch. As soon as we name the, the movies, you're like, all right, gotta watch this. I mean, listen. Everyone need. We all need an, an escape after a long week. And we're here to give it to you. And we're going to yeah. give it to you, all right? Whether we're going to give it to you with, good. Whether you're happy with the results of the election or not, it's neither here nor there. We're here to bring you the greatest podcast the world has ever seen. Brilliant podcasting. I've got a um, lot of people saying... A lot of, a lot of people, lot of people are talking about us. A lot of people are talking about us, frankly. Frankly, I got smart friends, big friends, Sof- sophisticated, sophisticated friends. Tell me. Um, I, actually, we shouldn't talk about this too much because Nick is a Trump supporter. And yeah, get him too. That's big. <laughs> too upset. Uh, Nick like still, nine. Nick still on that. You gotta have watchers when they count the votes. You've gotta be watching them. All right, listen. No more politics. Yeah, this is not on, Nick. Nick, shut off. By the letter for president. This, this is not um, – did you really just say that? Write it in. All right. Speaking of L's, speaking of, speaking of L's, <laughs> I'm, I got a good segue going here. The letter of this mm. week is L. Oh. Um, and we chose movies that start with that letter that we hope you enjoyed. But if not, what, so what movie are we starting with? Which one? Life of Pi. <laughs> Lawrence Lost of Arabia. In translation. Lawrence of Arabia. Nope, we're starting with Lucy. Some people Not... call Lucy the Lawrence of Arabia of the 21st century. Some a lot of people, a lot of people are calling a lot of people are calling it that. All right, what's Lucy about? What it, what is it about? All right, I'm about to evolve on your ass. A lot of people are asking. A lot of people are asking, what's Lucy about? And it's a I don't know. Simple, I, I don't know much about Lucy. Story. Did you know humans only use 10% of their brain capacity? Wait, wait, wait. Say what? Are you telling me I've been doing homework all this time with only 10%? Are yeah, you kidding imagine me? how fast you could get that homework I would not. Done. I wouldn't even have to pop 10 Adderalls a night anymore. Exactly. Just ten percent more. Put the speed down. Put the coke away. Just use more of your brain, dummy. What's the what's the drug called? Oh shoot, I don't know. It's what it's the hormone that mothers release when they're building fetuses. Apparently, it's the yeah. adrena adrena. Nick, you got to put your microphone to your mouth when you talk. Nick, you, come on. This is podcasting one hundred and one. The headphones aren't even on his ears. He doesn't. <laughs> It's embarrassing. Um, it's like the adrenochrome with the the Hollywood elite are yeah. harvesting. It's basically that. It's yeah, like it's Joe stem Biden cells. But so she has a bag of this drug put inside her to be smuggled across <laughs> international lines, and she gets a little razzle dazzled. She gets beat up, and the bag pops open. And that's when she starts to evolve. Meanwhile, we got Morgan Freeman over here. He's lecturing. If we used 100% of our brains, you don't even know what would happen. Oh, he knows. Okay. I think he knows. Deep down, he knows. But the world can't handle it. Next thing he knows, he's watching TV. Lucy's popping on. What? I've hacked into your TV. <laughs> I, I'm using 100% of my brain. I'm leveling no, up as we speak. No, that was only at like... That was like 40% of her 40%? brain. 40%? She was already in on the t- television. Are you kidding 100%, me? We don't even know where she went. But then she she meets her friend. Oh, I know where she went. She, she's got a guy who's with her who shoots people, but she, he's not leveling up, so who cares? And <laughs> he's, a rem- he's a reminder. All we have to say is that Lucy is the star of the show. And... She can it's Lucy's it. world, and we're yeah. all living in it. Exactly. Literally. And did I mention Lucy was the first woman? <laughs> the monkey woman. The first woman, yeah. So. And now she is the last. 
and first and last woman. You know what they say? I love Lucy. Lucy, come, Lucy, go. <laughs> and what did you guys think of Lucy? Luce, Lucy, see, Lucy, do. All right. Um, who's going? Who do? You, what? Who's going first? You want to say what you thought about Lucy first, <laughs> or me? Are you talking to me? Hey, you talk. You talk. I'll go first then. Um, All right. Go. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what the hell was that movie? movie Literally seen. the dumbest movie ever made. I think. <laughs> what the fuck? Honestly, literally, like I'm not even joking when I say dumbest movie ever made. I think it is, but I also <laughs> think that it embraces the dumbness wholeheartedly. And I don't know. but I think and what the fuck is wrong with the editing in this movie? <laughs> oh yeah, the editing is so bizarre. Editing everything about it is bizarre. I, and I think that my biggest issue with it is that, like, my biggest issue is that it doesn't go far enough with the action, I yeah, guess. I, I wish it was more action packed because it's, it's like there's like a couple scenes and then she just becomes into this all powerful being and there, and then there <laughs> isn't any more, and then there isn't no. any more action. But also, Lucy's an asshole because she goes out of her way to, like, <laughs> there's this, okay, you talk about the car cheat scene. The guy's like, oh, you want me to call the, my cop buddies off? And she's like, no. And then she launches five cop cars into like a public, uh, highly populated area for no reason. <laughs> she shoots a guy with brain cancer. <laughs> she, do, she does whatever the hell she wants. She's, um, loose, she's evolving. Know. Life does, has no meaning to her anymore. But yeah, she's this movie guy, is... doesn't speak English. None of this movie makes any sense. Like I don't. Nick, hold the microphone closer to your face, please. I isn't this loud enough? No, you're that significantly sounds, that louder. That sounds better. Now. That sounds better. Okay. Keep um, it there. Yeah, this movie's dumb. It makes zero sense. Like, <laughs> in what what, are you what way about? does she's evolving? But like, they didn't like. They're. It's so funny that they try and do this like like philosophical stuff with it like morgan freeman with his like exposition heavy like exposition <laughs> and then it's like oh by the way once you reach 40 percent, apparently you can hack into everything <laughs> which makes She's zero got, she, sense you, she utilizes the electromagnetic waves i don't know what you're talking it's, about it, it makes no and at some point it's just like you gotta just be like all right i'm along for the ride fuck it well, lucy no, the, also like the, the like, man. inciting incident doesn't even make sense. Like, her being, like, why would this drug have her brain evolve to 100%? Because it, it's like, that's the same, that's the same hormone that's released when you make a child. But it's like, that doesn't, like, that, that and your brain evolving to 100% is not, like, synchronous with, with each other. It, it doesn't make any sense. Lucy. Also, why does the smartest woman in the world now go to a doctor and say, I need you to take this out of me? She took a bullet out of herself. She and she just help. seemed to do that fine. She needed help. What, what can I say? And she's like, I need you, doctor, who seems to know nothing, to tell me everything about this drug. He's like, I've never heard of it. Oh, actually, I have. It, uh, this there's know. so it's many hard funny to talk about. there's so many funny moments in this i i think I the stuff in the stuff in the beginning like like really like film student level of like metaphor with like the pred the cheetah mm -hmm. chasing the antelope oh my and God, but but her wearing the fucking leopard print <laughs> it's just so like on the nose stupid stuff like that it's yeah it's hard to talk about without just like naming specific moments from this um i guess we have to start at the yeah. beginning like was really meet her friend richard who i guess she was dating i don't understand the relationship there he's dead in like the first five minutes spoiler who cares but, yeah, can we like, talk about how odd that whole scene is there's this weird echo over that whole yeah. scene which is bizarre and there's like no city noises and it feels really out of place and the editing is very like off kilter and it's the like, whole listen. thing comes off and there's it she like five times is like i'm not doing this for you 
and it mm. goes on for so long. And then he <laughs> sleight of hand handcuffs her, and it's so odd. There it is. Wouldn't she notice? Wouldn't she be like, "Hey, what the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> he's he's a ma- He's the master. But yeah, and then move. after that whole thing, what I, I, she goes up to an office and um has to open a briefcase that it, none of the plot stuff matters and the fucking um, guy from old boy yeah the guy from yeah. old boy and then morgan and freeman explains evolution like at the most like cursory and basic level which who the hell doesn't understand <laughs> that mm-hmm. they show videos of animals He's completely unrelated and unnecessary he's literally just it's, there to it's explain. literally it's filler because they didn't have enough content to fill out oh this entire God, movie yes. which also, is bonkers to me because how do you not with this concept, how do you not have enough content to fill out? This should, this could be like a three, this could be a three-hour epic. Slow down her evolution yeah. and make it like this three-hour epic, because why not? This movie's um, pacing is so weird because her brain doesn't start evolving until like twenty-five minutes in, and then, and then it then, like goes, goes, it, goes, goes, goes. Yeah, but then at like fifty-five minutes of this hour twenty movie. She's at, still at like forty percent, and then in like the last ten minutes, she evolves she like thirty percent. It's because she takes like four bags of the stuff that. Oh, I forgot uh, let's, about let's get this right. The, how blue it is. Walter White would go crazy for this stuff. It's hundred percent pure. Um, I don't know. It's hard to talk about because it is. It's completely substanceless. But at the same time, it's like, I definitely recommend this. To oh, people. I'd watch this with the bros. I'm, I want to do that. It's so fast paced and like just bizarre and weird. And it's crazy that a movie like this was has such a huge budget and like got greenlit in the first place and all of these major actors signed on to do it. It's, it's, it's an enigma. Yeah, I'm just looking... I'm just looking through my notes. The detective, which yeah, it seems like they're trying to set him up as a love interest, but she kisses him once and that's it. <laughs> yeah, for she's like, she, he's like, why do you have to keep me around? And she's like, as a reminder, and then kisses him, which I don't even know I what think that she means. She was gonna fuck him because he kept saying like Morgan Freeman kept saying, "You need to spread the cell." <laughs> <laughs> oh, you also, should like, pass on the information. Yeah, that that yeah, character is the most boring character who does not need to be there at all and is completely useless. Because Lucy is literally invincible by the he time she reaches. Stand there. By the time she reaches like forty percent, she's making invisible walls around people. And that's what and makes like, it like, like that stuff. That's what make ends up making it like almost more boring in the second act because. She becomes Ooh. so invincible that she doesn't even need to like fight anymore. No, you can literally just like what it doesn't make sense is like okay, at this capacity, you, you can control people. Literally, you could just stop all of their hearts at any second. So like when she's in the chair and they're doing this big like shootout, it's so many unnecessary deaths. She could literally just like snap <laughs> her fingers and stop all of their hearts, but she doesn't. She does Here's so. I... She allows so many unnecessary. How about the scene where she goes out and has to like hail a taxi or whatever? And the one guy doesn't speak English, so she shoots him in the head for no reason. <laughs> and, and like one, and one, you really are at this brain capacity, and she can. She looks up and sees languages changing on screens, but you can't speak it. You have to kill the guy because yeah. he. It, it's just like it's a lot of hilarious moments, and then like her with the hacking is obviously hilarious. Like she's her the friends. Her yeah, friends going so- on this. Her friends going on a tangent, and then it pans over to her opening two hundred thousand tabs at once. That's, that's it's the stuff so I funny. Love. All the bad, like the bad, like CGI moments. Oh, like the like, bloodstream, like CGI yeah, bloodstream. Yeah, and it's like, always funny. Just the some of the more bon- bonkers monkey. editing the choices. The worst CGI monkey I've ever seen. Yeah, it opens yeah. on a CGI monkey, and it's and that's what I knew I was in. I was like, yep, was, CGI yeah. monkey, I'm in. And then he comes back at the end. He makes a reappearance. The funny thing is, Scarlett Johansson in the next year after this movie came out was in Under the Sin. We got to talk about that. The, startling the, popular, the popular theory of the ScarJo cinematic universe yeah. is that after this, she, she, in this, she becomes the her. She yeah. becomes and the from AI. Her, she becomes and from under her, the skin. she becomes under the skin, which is just... Beautiful. 
It's just she's she... sent to destroy humanity. Um, oh no, she wasn't hacking that much in Under the Skin. Or maybe, maybe after Under the Skin, she becomes the her girl because she realizes the power of love. Um, another. I'm just like looking through my notes. Another funny moment that I'm surprised I haven't brought up yet. When she's trying to prove that, like, she can, she's trying to prove something to a group of people, and she makes a guy remember his kid dying for some reason. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's just so. so funny. She is so mean, like for no reason. Like, why did she have to bring she's back funny. that memory? Oh my gosh, she's incredible. It <laughs> reminds me of that the fucking Rick and Morty episode where the ship <laughs> brings back the the guy's dead kid or whatever. Dude, it's yeah. like a parody almost. Oh yeah, it's so it's just so bizarre. And her acting is really bad too. She isn't she is not great in this. There's a it's scene the where she's like there's a scene it's where she's like drugged and like starts going crazy. <laughs> it's not good. At the same time it feels completely genuine to me. Like the the attempts to make like a cool, smart action sci-fi thriller feel real like completely sincere and that's part of the charm to me yeah for sure so like it rarely yeah. winks at you if yeah. ever <laughs> it covers so many important things so fast like she calls her parents once in this movie and then just completely forgot oh, yeah. and she says <laughs> yeah. she says I remember the taste of your milk. I was like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. So oh, the right, the, just the writing is, is so weird. Uh, but yeah, the I, mom was so nonchalant. She was like, "Okay, bye." Yeah, and I. It's just the fact that it tries to get all like scientific and philosophical is just so funny to me because it really hangs on to that. Toward to right all the way into the end, and then the last line is like, <laughs> "It's like humanity know will know what to do with it," and then it just ends like, "What the hell? What does that even mean?" Like, yeah, that final shot, <laughs> the final has, like, line, no relation to the rest of the movie at all. Doesn't mean anything. My God, she faces off against a dinosaur too. Yep, like King Kong. <laughs> Lucy and the King Kong are in the same cinematic universe. Who would win in a fight, Lucy or King Kong? I was going to say, who would win in a fight, Lucy or the, the 2001 baby? Yeah, I think this movie deals with human evolution as well as 2001. I mean, <laughs> he, it was clearly an influence. Yeah. I, I would mean, say come on. this movie has a better soundtrack than 2001. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the music <laughs> is so bad. Ugh. <laughs> Can't say a, I did not a, enjoy it though. Morgan Freeman has a line. Somebody asks what she's doing. It's towards the end, and he says, "She's looking for energy and matter." Is <laughs> it there? And she it's grabs like, okay. like a printer. <laughs> yeah, that's she grabs like random objects. But yeah, I, I guess my I it's a bummer because of I think if this did have like actual substance to it, like I wanted like blood and gore out of this, like I wanted yeah, like, yeah, I, was about, I wanted like an action. I wanted her to go, I yeah, to go and, It was rated R, wasn't it? Yeah, which is weird because it does not Why like. The fuck were there like blood squibs at all when someone was shot? Like I didn't see Brightburn, but I feel like this movie's too smart for that. Does doesn't Brightburn get like gory and stuff? Yes, it does. But like, I wouldn't even say Brightburn. That's what I'm saying. This just needed more like cool action shit, you know? Because the concept's want... there and the dumbness is there. It's just not. It's not action packed and like the if the main entertainment factor is like the writing and like the editing and like logic mm -hmm. stuff, then like. That's all fine and good because it's funny, but like what would push it over the top as this sort of dumb fun movie would be like the action, like over the top action yeah. and like gore. And it just doesn't have that, sadly. The only thing we get um, is like 8 million car crashes and one car chase scene. Yeah. Half of those car accidents come out of nowhere, too. It seems like people are just flipping on the road. Yeah, she has no, she doesn't care about human life, which is weird why Whoa. she like makes it her mission to pass on the knowledge because she does not, clearly doesn't give a shit about anyone she realizes and these she individual lives are of no value to her it's about the species bro. anyways speaking of species life force we didn't even get to <laughs> speaking of species 
All right. Um, They're very similar uh, crossover between Lucy and Life Force as well. All right. Scores then? I have nothing. Else. I don't. It would oh, just be oh. more talking about like moments. I would. I would watch this with friends again. For sure. Me too, would, for sure. I would buy it on Blu-ray. I own it on Blu-ray. I bought this on a whim. You knew. I knew there was something special. Well, I I wanted to see. I remember seeing the trailers when this came out and being like, "What if you That's could a use fucking stupid idea?" A hundred percent of your brain. I remember thinking, "That's ingenious." That is brilliant. Oh, well, well, right, what's even... what's the scores? I'll go five. I was between a five and a six. I'll go five. Honestly, I'll go six. It was, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I I do appreciate all of its flaws and just how bizarre and any major blockbuster movie that like amb- that fouls this ambitiously is but embraces always a plus. The failure. Yeah. It's always a plus. Nick, did you say four? My eyes. Yeah, I said four. Okay. Four, five, six. Next up. Life Force. Speaking of getting sucked to death, let's talk about Life Force. Life Force follows your typical uh, space alien zombie movie plot line. Space alien vampire. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And zombie. Umbrella spaceship, too. I forgot about that. Um, so these astronauts with the ESA, they find an alien spaceship. Yeah, British. In the, what the fuck is it? Haley's oh, Haley's Comet. Comet. Yeah. Once every and 76 years. One of the, one of the astronauts, they see these beautiful creatures, humans. Beautiful, big breasted. Big breasted alien. He's like, God, I don't want to fuck her. Bring her to the ship. So they do. They're on the ship. And then <laughs> I think it's NASA intercepts the ship. And okay, everyone's fucking dead. Except for these three alien humanoids. And they three bring sexy them alien humanoids. Sexy alien naked humanoids. They bring them to London. And they're like, we don't know what these things are. They're in force fields, though. Probably safe. Shout out Matilda May. Who's <laughs> Is that, that the main girl? bitch? Don't use that word. I mean, main woman. <laughs> yes. That's <laughs> Anyways, they uh, these vampire space aliens, they don't, uh, they don't drink your blood. They drink your life force. They don't drink it, they... Um, they, they they send it absorb. to the, they absorb it, your and, they and suck you dry. Send it to the heavens. And release. Anyways, so basically, it's the entire plot is they're trying to find the main girl until they realize they've been duped, and all of one. She's Patrick just, Stewart. Yeah. She was Patrick Stewart. Had, wait, idiots! It actually, was wait. Patrick Stewart the whole time. <laughs> wait, no, she's the prime minister. I uh, use his full title, Sir Patrick Stewart. He's been knighted. Thank you. He wasn't at the time. In this movie. What did you guys think of Life Force? Hmm. Do you want to go first or me? Um. I. I don't know. I don't know if I liked this. This movie I don't think, sucks. I don't think I liked this. This is pretty bad. It was pretty I think, bad. <laughs> I think it has like a couple of moments. And like there's certainly something there, but I did not like this. I think it is. You guys are delusional. I, this was great. Oh, come this. on. It so oh, it's fun. not oh good. My God. Come it's on. so bad. <laughs> it is so confusing oh. and the plot is so boring and hard to follow no, and all of the special effects are, look so bad. It and starts lazy. good and then like it starts all right and then divulge it just turns into basically a 
zombie movie <laughs> by the end. And it's like, all right. A zombie movie? Are you fucking delusional? Yes, it does turn into a zombie movie at the end. No, it literally is what it is at the end. A giant spaceship in the fucking sky. And Before, has- like, I'm not talking about, like, the very, very end. I'm saying, like, the last, like, third act is it's literally just, like, a zombie movie at that point. The plot yeah. is so bad. I mean, it starts okay with, like, but also, like, we've seen this Listen, version of this idea a million times before. I like the idea. Are better ways? Are you kidding me? But I then, like the, don't get me wrong, I like the idea of an apocalypse started by some guy being way too horny, but it just doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't go anywhere. But then, it's so confusing. But yeah, it doesn't go anywhere because it spends like an hour with a completely unlikable main character, two unlikable main characters. Who are not good actors. Who are both bad at acting. And like, a huge chunk of this movie is spent on their trip to meet this one red-headed girl and then no it's not what it's, yes, it is. it's also very it's like it's a large heavy. chunk of this movie is spent on like the most boring setting with the most boring characters who are all bad at acting and then it's like they there's gave- really nothing well, they Nick, gave- what what did you get? Like, well, like, why do you like it? You go ahead. Well, this we'll movie is talking. so fucking bonkers and goes, and the, some of the things in this movie are insane. The first thing we see is like this giant like space set, and like we get this cool ass design for a spaceship too. Like, I fucking love the design in this movie. No, for no, no, no. I, yeah, I said I like the. I think I like where it starts. I think them going into. Haley's comment and all that was like visually interesting. Even and then it, look, soon, it looks terrible. I don't like, think that looks. I thought the sets special there effects were, wise. I kind of liked the because it also because the, the sets felt so derivative of Alien to me. I was not impressed with them. I, Any I think movie after this time is derivative of Alien. I yeah, think what's interesting it about just the like worse Alien to me. I completely disagree. What do you mean? Alien is human technology, and this is like nothing like that no, when they explore the space when they explore the planet they get the alien from i don't think nick's saying looks, this is as good as alien <laughs> it's know, like a high I'm, bar to <laughs> but that's what i'm that's what i'm saying i don't think literally one sets... of the best literally one of the best looking movies yeah, ever. <laughs> i know i don't think i'm just saying i think the sets i'm not giving props to the sets because i think they just look like alien ripoffs i completely disagree I don't even know where you're getting that from. I what I like about the effects, kind of, is that they gave Toby Hooper like this big budget, and like they gave him the special effects guy from literally Star Wars, and he was like, "Nope, I'm still gonna make this look, make the effects look low budget," <laughs> which I kind of respect. And I think there is like some visually interesting stuff. Like it's, I like mostly practical effects in this movie. Um, I think all like, um. I agree that I like the practical I effects. Know call them. The victims. When yeah, like, I think there's a lot of cool face stuff. I wasn't yeah, impressed I with the practical really effects either. I disagree. Like when they, when they I sucked them. the blood out of Patrick Stewart's body. No, that was awesome. That I liked so that. bad. You could see that. it was like a paper mache version of Sir Patrick Stewart yeah. in like a studio it and it looked like mache. trash. I know, I liked, how, I liked how that looked. I liked most of the effects. I liked like them like exploding into ash i thought all that was cool yeah like especially the facials like when people's faces shifted to like this like the life force i don't know what to call them you're telling me when sir patrick stewart gets all of his blood sucked up it's literally all sucked out of his body and turns into a woman who screams and then explodes into a bloody pulp that didn't get you going anyway no because it looked like shit i i think you're being a little harsh I think you're being a little harsh. I, I, think I know that, yeah, but I've seen other, even Toby Hooper films that I know he can do better than this. And like, I guess if he did intentionally bad practical effects for this movie. They're not, I don't think they're bad. I do. What movie are you talking about that Toby Hooper has done better? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Oh, you mean the one that's a comedy? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry that the practical effects in that movie look better than the, than in this movie. Uh, what? 
Okay, yeah, comparisons aside, aside when comparisons he aside. splits the car in half in that movie, that's fucking amazing. That's completely different from the practical effects in this movie, though. Well, two, I'm just saying that two. I've seen him do good practical effects in his other movies. Even so I'm not going to give him props for practical movie, effects that I didn't think looked good in this movie. Top. And it's also a completely different effects person doing that. Okay, I'm sorry that his standards of quality aren't the same, then. This felt like a like. This kind of felt like a like a failed John Carpenter movie at points, like it lacked it. It had like it. It reminded me of like something John Carpenter like like conceptually would do, but it a lot of times it just didn't feel like it had like the substance to like keep me going throughout. Um, I agree with Nick that I think there are some visually. Actually, you go ahead. Sorry. I will say there's something here probably to say about, um, well, when you usually cover vampires in any sense, usually you're going to get into a sexual, like. Oh, yeah, there's there's definitely sexual stuff yeah. here. And I would say, like, it has something to say about that. And I think it kind of can keep you through. But I will say that it's not, it's definitely Don't not like. Don't be horny. Don't yeah, be men horny. Are that can be a message. Why not? It's true. Yeah, I, I, I think I think I agree with Nick that there is some like visually interesting stuff, and I think like conceptually there is some interesting stuff. It just never grabbed me, and the story is so like convoluted and like wastes so much time. And just by the end, I was just like tired and like, all right, it's just zombies now and i don't know really what's the rules of it change like i'm not sure if the like it seems like they can either they transmit themselves by like sucking the life force or they'll just like jump between bodies at will i was like confused by the rules and then like there's a zombie oh, yeah, and, I, and I, I was just like i don't know like i was just i don't know i was like i don't know what is going on anymore like none of the acting was particular like either over the top or good to like get me involved. And the writing was kind of boring and exposit exposition heavy. And I don't know. I just, I think I wanted to like it more than I did. Cause I was like, Oh, Toby Hooper with the effects guy from star Wars. That sounds pretty cool. Um, with alien vampires, aliens, naked sex vampires. Sure. All right. And then it just didn't end up like being over the top or, it's weird, but not like weird enough to like make it all worth it, I guess. Yeah, I didn't think of the Carpenter comparison until now, but it makes a lot of sense because I think a part of what he does, which is so enjoyable about a lot of his movies, is that he takes like B movie ideas and kind of elevates them. And in this, like they live, like yeah, they. I was thinking they live, escape from New York, mm -hmm. even the thing in a lot of respects, but like. Of like, yeah, the effects in this weren't quite as good as the thing. <laughs> as the thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, I think this is definitely an opportunity for something like that. A B-movie idea elevated to a really quality movie. But it just, for all the reasons John just stated, and more because I was not a huge fan of any of the effects in this movie. I think I did not. I, guess, I was mostly bored throughout the whole thing. I guess I kind of knew what I was getting into. I knew this was like clearly like it's not high art at all. I'm not. I'm not gonna sit here and say not? this is a fucking mess. What do you mean? And if you disagree with me, I completely understand why people don't like this movie, and I completely understand why you guys don't. But I think I just enjoy it for like how schlocky it is, and I just found it damn entertaining. I wish, like bit, me. I wish they had a bit more gore. If it, I wish it was a little gorier. And I wish I some of the fun. monster designs were like more unique. Or I think like the zombies fine. looked The zombies looked bad at the end. I think the makeup completely was completely forgettable and bad. And I thought like the the real form of the vampires being the giant like Basically, like pterodactyl things. I think they were bats. Yeah, they didn't yeah, look good either. I thought their design was all right. Um, 
Yeah, I had big problems with the zombie makeup towards the end. They looked all pretty boring. Um, even though I think that like the kind of life sucked faces at the beginning looked good. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, it just didn't. I, I think the, the most interesting stuff was like the weird space stuff. And it kind of abandons that. Like I almost wish it did go more of like an alien route and just have it be like the story of how they all got killed on the spaceship. You know what I mean? Instead of trying to make it this big, like worldwide thing, I think a tighter, smaller story would have been better, especially like given what Toby Hooper is good at. I think, I think that if he stayed more in his wheelhouse there, I think it could have been a better movie. It's yeah, almost also, like, it's almost like too ambitious. Yeah. But it also, the- it didn't utilize its scope at all. Cause like, even though this is supposed to be like a big worldwide thing, it felt like it took place over the course of like four sets. No, that's what I'm saying. Is I don't yeah, think yeah. he, I think if he, if he stuck to this, if he put all that budget into this sort of like small space story, even if it did come off as like an alien copy or whatever, I think the concept itself alone of like, it definitely could have veered into the more like perverse and sexual stuff um, that he's good at. I think he could have told a story like like a space story like that in a better way, I guess. I would I would disagree because I think one of the things that I like in this movie is how at the end he kind of just goes, fuck it, London's under attack now. Because I think that leads to like some of the coolest imagery, like London burning in the background and like the coolest lighting moments. And I think if it did go the way you did mention like an alien ripoff at the end basically i think it'd become way more forgettable and i'm not saying I think there I isn't think much this movie is forgettable but i think the idea of a toby hooper schlock fest alien copy is with naked with naked with, vampire yeah, with the, that sounds hot awesome naked vampires this, sounds amazing you would even if it is quick with the things you i don't do. think so not I mean, with alien toby alien Hooper's, doesn't Creativity. Alien, alien understands how to build tension and everything. I think, this, but are like, you saying this movie doesn't. I think what happened here is that I feel like they gave you tension. Toby Hooper can build tension, though. I feel like they asked. Oh my god, yeah. I feel like the fucking Leatherface chase sequence in the woods is well. <laughs> but like, chase, we're supposed to be a dark comedy. What I'm saying, I'm saying he. What I'm saying is that it seems like a studio asked him to make this broad, like this very broad, like high budget thing when I think he, and he, you can see him trying to put like these low budget, this low budget sort of feel to it. And I think that would have lended itself better to a much smaller scale, tighter thing. Cause this, a lot of this just ends up seeming like filler and a lot of it ends up seeing boring. What were you saying? I don't think a studio would be really high on the idea of a naked woman uh, basically sucking people to death. What are you talking about? This probably, that was like the main selling point of the movie. Get the hottest girl you could find. Well, I'm just saying this doesn't really reek of studio interference with me. I'm not saying studio interference. I'm saying, I'm saying it was like. The long stretches of gratuitous nudity nudity <laughs> yeah i'm not yeah, but... saying that like a studio interfered on this i'm saying that like maybe asking him to do this type of movie this larger scale thing was like it just wasn't even... like in his wheelhouse to make this. i know but i'm saying i'm saying i don't know how well it worked mm. this was a critical failure when it came out which that, that doesn't oh, really no. mean anything i can a lot of movies were critical failures when they came out and went on to be loved, but um, all three of these movies, I think, were critical failures. Literally, like a lot of the critique of the, a lot of the early critique of this was like how convoluted and confusing it becomes, and that's why I'm saying like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I hate to like compare movies again, but like it is such a tight, like small scale thing that it's it, it seemed really to like suit his style like what he was good at. And I think if he transferred like that tightness to this film, 
I think it could have been more interesting, I guess. Because a lot of it just ends up seeming like, like it's just like going, like going through the motions. Like, especially like the second act is very just long and the same thing and boring to me. I think the first and third act, I think the first act is probably the best, but even that is slow and a little boring. I wish I liked it more. I really do. Because conceptually, I thought it seemed interesting. Me too. But I disagree. I, I even think we were missing something. We didn't even mention the music, which I think is fucking phenomenal. I cannot think of the music. Yeah, I don't know. I don't Yeah. Sorry. I couldn't tell you anything about the music. Nick, can you sing it to us? I tell you a lot about this movie, and I watched it yesterday. Can you sing us the music? Well, there's an orchestra. I can't sing that. Just hum it. No, try kidding. your best. <laughs> What's I'll, the main I, I'll, get on, I'll get an instrument. Oh, well. Well, I don't, I don't necessarily have anything else to say about this. There's another one I don't have a ton to say about. Disappointing. I'm sorry, yes, Nick. Agreed, I agree. I think... It definitely has a cult following now. Yeah, and I'm sure. a part of that cult following. Because I think you just really... Yeah, drink it. up the Kool-Aid, bitch. This was a live look oh. at Biden's America. <laughs> I'll say that. Exactly. <laughs> Be ready. I, just, <laughs> Get ready, I got America. one last thing to say. And that is, watch this movie. Just, just go in, you know? Just... Anything that comes up, be like, fuck yeah, I'm going to go along with the ride. And then you'll get surprised, like, Patrick Stewart, there he is. He's going to make out with a man. Well, he's in the opening credits. Which version did you guys watch of this? How long was the cuts? An hour 40. Yeah, there's an hour 56 minute cut, which I watched the version on HBO Max. I didn't realize. I watched the uh, HBO Max. Yeah, we're 51. Yeah, maybe Nick so... got something we didn't. Yeah, maybe yeah, Nick maybe. saw some awesome scenes we missed out on. <laughs> maybe. But all I Scores? say is just enjoy yourself for the ride because I think it's a fun movie. Yeah, get... I say go watch Lucy and Sad. Yeah, Stash. get wicked drunk. That's the only way you'll get through this boring oh, slog of the film. Out. Take the drug Lucy's on, then you'll be able to. Yeah. <laughs> all right, scores. Seven. Four out of ten. I'll go five. I give out so many fives. It is the 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 um the middle is what makes sense. That is a good observation. <laughs> well speaking of speaking of being lost watching something because we didn't couldn't follow the story in uh life this is rough this is real rough Um, lost highway by one david lynch the master the master himself on the cast second lynch second lynch um lost highway is about um, a man who murders his wife out of jealousy. What's his job? He's a jazz musician. He's he a murders his wife. Player. He's the he most. Goes to jail. <laughs> he goes to jail, and then he becomes another man, a younger man, a much younger man, a vibrant young man, Pete. and uh, shenanigans ensue. I don't really, we can get more into plot stuff just because it's pretty crazy. Um, sure, Lost Highway, what'd you guys think? All right. I'm a, I'm a big Lynch head. I, wish, I probably shouldn't say that. I mean, I'm a big David Lynch fan. <laughs> and he's never done wrong. And that street mm. continues. Until, I, was gonna, I thought he was going to drop an until okay. now. Nope, this movie was great. I was, this movie was fucking awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I also, I loved it. I thought it was great. And and I'll third that. Hell yeah, this movie rocked. Really good. Good stuff. My definitely favorite not, I, I think it's definitely not some of his best. But Certainly I think, not. But that's a I high think, bar. Well, yeah. But <laughs> I think 
I do. I would definitely rate this higher than something like Inland Empire, which I was not the biggest fan of. Spoiler on what your score is. So I was just saying in like my mind. I mean, I was saying, okay. Speaking of in your speaking of in I your mind. It. Speaking of in your mind. Um, actually, no. You guys keep give me some of your thoughts. I don't know how I'm to like, approach. Are we talk about. The I don't know how to approach or... this one because there's a lot to talk about. I feel um, like let's go. Do we have anything we didn't like about the movie? Is Marilyn Manson in this movie? Oh, the soundtrack rips. Marilyn yeah. Manson, uh, Smashing Pumpkins. No, I mean, was he literally yeah, in this? Movie? I would not. I didn't see him, but I would not. He was be the devil. If he was there. in the porno, no, in one of the tapes. I swear to God, I was saw he? him in the one. That's cool. If he was. I wouldn't be surprised. He was the one that died. Stuff I didn't like. Um. Hmm. I'm not a huge fan of the music, but I can understand. Really? I love the soundtrack. <laughs> the soundtrack is awesome. Uh, <laughs> that's a gym face. That's more personal. That's with me. Bottle Menti. Oh, my God. Bottle Menti is the, the goat. Oh, such good music. Bad, but personally, like, I'm not a huge fan of, like, metal. Uh, you so. like the f- no, but, like, it's, it's not all metal. It's... It's such a good mix of like jazz and metal and it ends just with like a, such like a, a good... pop ballad. You didn't even like like the score? Like No, I like the score. It was just like Okay, the... you're just talking okay, you're just talking about the soundtrack. Yeah. This is even nothing then. against the movie. I'm saying personally. I'm still cringing, Nick. I am too. Um I, I guess I think you. this might just be like meaning to rewatch <laughs> it again. But like the ending, I thought I like understood what it was doing, and then the ending kind of like the very end kind of threw me for a loop, and I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the very end. But that might just be like, oh, I thought I knew what was going on, and then it kind of flipped flipped it on its head a little bit. Yeah, I definitely need to watch this again. But that me might too. just be because it's certainly. I was like, okay, I I like understood. I was like, okay, this guy began dreaming about a younger, more <laughs> sexually adequate of- sexually adequate version of himself and then yeah, that, basically like, um, he dreamt he was a chad but then like at the end it's like this other guy's fingerprints were found in the house and then like he goes and like talks talks yeah. to himself or something yeah, it's just like with the, it's all the, just like stuff i think i need to watch it again the girl being like a double in the photo and then a single in the photo. But like also, like, but then like, it's also like the guy's fingerprints were there. So I wasn't sure. Yeah, was like the only thing I wasn't really sure about was the fingerprints being there. Cause I was like, Oh, that and I mean, him yeah. talking into the intercom to himself. I thought of that yeah. as just like he planned. He always wanted to do this himself. Like, but like at that point it seemed, I thought we were like, I didn't, that's, that was like a, from that point on, reality and dream world were very much like separate. And then, like by the very end, they kind of come together in a way that left me. Yeah, I know it's a David Lynch movie. Again, this might just be like I need to watch it again. But it yeah, just left I know me a saying. little like, bit confused. I don't. I didn't hate the ending. It just left me a little bit like. No, I didn't. I didn't. Scratching my head. Um, no, it left me. I mean, it's not one of those things you watch it once and you immediately like write a dissertation about or anything but i already did um i i understand can i read it (laughs) um yeah i think it's a i think it has a lot to say about sex in the film industry and pornography in general and just also male and like male inferiority complexes and jealousy and like i think and just like general feelings of like aging out and how that applies to like Hollywood this, as well. This is like the, like I think in a lot of ways, like I kind of got sort of like Eraserhead vibes thematically. I almost, got that. I almost, got that in the first ha- the first portion with his wife in their in their apartment or so, their house. Yeah, this movie guess- sort has like it has like three very different sections and i think all maybe my favorite part about this is how it pops between genres like the first section is very much like (laughs) this very nightmarish horror film like thing especially with like the video camera and like that reminds me really uh, cachet is the obvious thing it's lynch yeah it's lynch's cachet 
and I think I literally wrote that in my notes. Um, but I think it gets into this. Like, he he says something about like um, not liking to record things because he likes to remember things as they were. And I think that gets an interesting stuff of like obviously with the guy, the mystery man coming at him with the camera at the end, being like, no, the he, only way, he, the only way to like really cement reality is through film or through rec- he, recording. And I think he, says he doesn't he, he doesn't like remembering things as they were. He likes remembering them as he felt them. Or yeah, yeah, as yeah. he experienced them. Which gets into Which the, is why the, he becomes a sex movie. god in the yeah. second yeah. portion of the movie. And is terrified by the camera, the man with the camera, because yeah. that's like that's the only thing that can ground you is film, which is interesting that Lynch uses film to do the exact opposite. Um but yeah, the first section is very much this like horror thing and very dreamlike and scary, which is weird because it's not the dream. And then when he goes into this vision, it very much becomes like like blue velvety, like noir yeah. comedy. And, like there's a lot funny. of like especially with the, the like Richard Pryor the tailgating s- Richard Pryor comes in. The you tailgating scene fucking- is the hardest I've laughed at something in a while. Um, just fucking hilarious. And then he, him pulling him in the car, <laughs> being like, "You like, you like porno, kid? <laughs> Does it give you an <laughs> erection?" It's just like it's so funny. It's like Lynch has like the, the best fucking sense of humor, and it shines there. And then it just in the third act, it just turns into this balls to the walls, like abstract thing that, and it flows between all three so well. Um, I would like to say in the second part of this movie i think you could like split this movie into three parts and i think that's the point i like when the detectives are following him are like damn this guy gets a lot of pussy <laughs> yeah yeah it's, but, yeah, it's, it's like, like very self-aware yeah, so is... adds it too. i think it's really good there's a scene in the jail when they're like <laughs> when like one of them goes and checks on him and he comes back and he's like <laughs> It's like the wife killer has a headache, and the other guy's like, <laughs> "Which one?" And then there's like a like an awkwardly long pause, and they like they get into like this very cartoonishly loud laugh. It's just like very a lot of like Lynchian funny stuff going on. Um, Lynch is always my favorite of mine. I think yeah, it's I think because it's- like everything he does is so unique, but it still works. And it all it all fits him. I mean, all yeah. this he deals with a lot of the same themes and like the same messages in all of his movies. But I think this was a uh, unique enough take on things to be interesting. I don't think mm-hmm. I think that might be one thing that prevents it from being one of his best. Oh, he's gonna compare it to Mulholland Drive. Here we go. I, get, I don't want to do. Here this together, we go. He does uh, it every you know, time. He's refined. All, all of his themes in other movies better, including Eraserhead and Mahan Drive are two examples of that. I think this is touching on different enough stuff. Than it is. Because I, yeah. I think Mulholland Drive deals with identity in a very different way than this. Um, I think yeah, I don't sure. think this is necessarily... This is I think this is much more focused on... It, it has elements of like the film industry and sexualization of women, but I think it's more than that it digs it like is a critique and it digs into the into like the male minds in a lot of ways that Eraserhead does um and I think it's a lot more focused on that and like feelings of inferiority and jealousy especially in men which is what makes it stand out to me as different from because it has the sort of identity swapping weirdness of Mulholland Drive and even like like the noir mystery it's unique enough where I think it still works really well and I think that the fact that it's coming from a male perspective on Hollywood and sexualization of women and lost identity. And it has a lot to do about memories as well and remembering mm-hmm. things. So yeah, I, I, that's why I loved it is because it takes, it's, it's a kind of different perspective on his themes, which is really fascinating. And it just it genuinely works in every section as being creepy or funny or just kind of dreamlike and I love how in the third section you get these sort of like glitches in the system sort of like they'll have like blurring of the faces or like 
there's a scene where he's in a hallway and there's like lightning in the background and it just it does a it's a great like like i don't know if i want to say subtle but like visually interesting way to show like the idea of like this dream deteriorating and this dream crumbling and it and like the down like his sort of descent in the third act is just a really great like representation of this like being brought back to reality in that way yeah and I think overall, I I loved how this looked visually. Um, Me too. It's he so, is just so good. He is just so yeah. masterful with lighting and set design, especially in that first act. So I think many visually powerful speaking, close-ups as well. Oh, her on the phone with just her lips is just mm-hmm. so gorgeous. He's just so great with. It's just so clear that he he is like a painter at heart because he's just so good at like bringing this these images to life on screen. Um, I think his like um, his sets are great, especially in the first act. I think that house is mm-hmm. very like it's just you can tell he's very precise with literally everything within the shot, and it really really works, and it really like makes that space feel nightmarish and scary, <laughs> even though it is just literally just this house. I would like to say about the sets. Um, I think it's very interesting that. The mansion and the second part of the movie, where like he's walking down the hall after they've killed, what's his name, Andy? I don't remember his name. Yeah, Andy. Brutal fucking death by the way. Oh my yeah. god. Damn. Yeah, it shows that he's also pretty damn good at gore. Yeah, but I also like how um that hallway is very reminiscent in the third part of like the motel hallway. I think it's a really like mm-hmm. nice comparison and. Really and the hallway in his, in his house, in his home. When what? in his you home, there, re- there's like that dark hallway they do enter. Do yeah, that's, do he that? does it, yeah. And, that's what I'm saying. He does a great job at like kind of blending these different spaces like, together in a way. They're all different enough, but there's some similarities. So it doesn't lose itself in being different. Yeah, it's like every movie he makes, he has these motifs that he repeats over and over again. It's, but it's, it's really never fascinating. Been, like, what, I, what I find interesting about David Lynch is that he's such a popular filmmaker, but his like movies are uniquely slow, and like, and it's it's really interesting to see how he's like captured this this sort of like dreamlike state that audiences love, despite the fact that like almost every other piece of like slower cinema. It's gen like generally not liked by mainstream audiences. And yeah, I think there's just something mesmerizing about the way he frames things and the way he uses sound that like really captures this aesthetic that is very entertaining to watch, even if not much in the movie is happening or if it's a slower paced scene or something. Yeah, you can talk all you want about how like weird and out there and inaccessible David Lynch films are, but like he really does take these avant-garde ideas and like these surreal ideas of more experimental films and kind of makes them accessible in a way that like cuz he he clearly is a fan of like the ideas of like slow cinema and even like experimental stuff like you see it in a lot of his i think you think of twin peaks episode eight of the return and it's like that calls mine like works of like stan brackage or other experimental films like that and it's he makes these ideas accessible which is what makes him so interesting to me is that is that kind of contradiction that he not a bunel or however you pronounce his name louis brunel yeah for sure. A lot of that in his works. And, Louis I mean, C.K.? A lot of, a <laughs> lot lot of, of Louis C.K. C.K. in a lot his of works. CK in his a lot works. of C.K. A lot of C.K. <laughs> but, no, he's, I'm, he's a f- fascinating filmmaker. And I, I, despite how surreal and bizarre a lot of his movies are, he has a huge audience of people who love him. I think his talent and his just craftsmanship speak to that i think what really 
the his talent is his ability to like grab actors that you would never expect in like a great movie like this. Go yeah, pull right. Like Gary Busey in this movie is awesome. I fucking loved him in this. Yeah, movie. Gary Busey is in it. So Gary Busey, fucking Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor is hilarious. Yeah, Bill he has Pullman one too. scene and he steals this. He steals the scene. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't necessarily dissing on Bill Pullman's acting abilities. I was just saying he's mm-hmm. really good in this movie. They're all yeah, they're all great in this. Balthazar Getty. <laughs> Gary Busey just, as his father was kind of terrifying. It's so yeah. what's funny to me is that in the second yeah, act, it, it I don't know if you got this, but you know how he has all those like the leather jacket like cool guy friends in the second act? Yeah. They all I was like, oh, they're all just they're all just James. <laughs> this guy's dreaming about being this guy's dreaming about being James. And it's just so funny. That's why I love the second act so much because it's just I was just so thoroughly like entertained by how funny it is. And I think this that, came out after Twin Peaks, right? I don't I'm not sure. I'm but, pretty sure. I think this was ninety five. But almost part of it feels no, like it's right. yeah, it was, this was after Twin Peaks, you're right. It, I, caught, it, I caught a lot of Twin Peaks similarities. Between. It feels like Lynch is like poking fun at what the idea of like the ideal male <laughs> is, especially in the '90s. Like he's clearly like trying to make humor out of that, which I love because it's like that's it's I I'm not entirely sure how Lynch feels about this because I feel like he um I feel like part of him does maybe idolize this idea of the cool guy like James Dean type, but. He is but it, he could also be making fun of it. I'm not sure, but he definitely it's... does idolize it. But I think that creates a kind of a fascinating conflict of between like, like the scene where uh, I'm blanking on her name. You know the main actress, Patricia Arquette. Yeah, the scene where she's forced to strip in the audition with for the porno. It's definitely uncomfortable, but it's also like clearly intended to be a sexy yeah, scene that's really and like that's... it's a very like like it's not handled in a way where it's like clear that david lynch is taking a stance against it and i think part of that adds a lot to like the themes of the movie where if it was something where it was like just p- purely against something like forced sexualization of someone like a scene in like funny games or something but I think there's a lot of depth to the fact that he did shoot it and execute it in a way where it was played off as a very I, sexy scene. And I, I think you got to give a lot of credit to the the music there too, because I think Bottle Menti is great at capturing this like stylish but like almost uncertain feeling in his music. And her performance too was excellent. Yeah, yeah. and I think like it's weird to talk about it, but I think <laughs> David Lynch is like one of the best directors at capturing sex scenes throughout all of his work mm-hmm. even in this cuz one he's There's both a lot of sex he's great at capturing it like beautifully but like he makes it he brings it to life as this as this like sexy and stylish thing but there is always this undercurrent of like uncertainty to it he does that in twin peaks there's like the famous one at the end of the return with Laura Dern and uh, McLaughlin and I I don't know if you guys you guys haven't seen one of them, it does right? it in, uh, probably the best example is Blue Velvet seen yes one? Wild Blue at Heart no I haven't I want to really bad well, I think Wild at Heart gears much more into the cool side of his sex scenes um because there's some good ones in there between Nick Cage and Cage Laura Dern of course there is he is the funniest part of that movie is that Nick Cage becomes this fucking sex symbol in it um, that movie is great. Sense. That movie is that movie's maybe like his most bonkers. It's very I gotta watch it. I do too. But no, I've one the Lynch... best example of capturing sex scenes that are like sexy and completely uncertain and kind of wrong is Blue Velvet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean this kind of I have one more Lynch to go, Elephant Man. But like oh wow really that's all that's left he's re- i'll probably watch that soon he's really kind of being cemented as maybe my favorite <laughs> i hate to steal nick's thing but like i'm genuinely in between everything i've watched of him it's like really connects with me i don't know i think i got two to go 
Wild at Heart and and uh, Straight Story, I think, is all that's left. Oh, and Dune. Oh, I Dune. haven't seen I haven't seen Dune. Maybe that will change my mind. He hates Dune. He hates it. So, yeah, yeah this became know. kind of a broader discussion of David Lynch. <laughs> I dig works. it. I like this. I like yeah. this discussion. Let's just talk about Lynch. He is, he's it. just such a, he's like a character of himself in his movies. Cause like you can't. <laughs> he is a character himself. That fucking yeah. David Lynch documentary is incredible. It was incredible. It's so good. Fucker gets more pussy than a toilet seat. How about that line? Yes, that was line. Good, good line. Or how about. <laughs> The girl. I was talking about the shot of her lips on the phone. Do you know what she says? What? The first word she says? Meow, meow. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> meow, meow. I, I don't know. I, the I love The cabbing set. That was very eerie. and. Just I a- love how I think he delivers information great in this. Like, you get, the, like, the Laurent is dead in the beginning. And yeah. then, like, you find out that that's who he you like find out about who that is subtly later on in like the second act and then you're like oh he's fantasizing about fucking his wife because he fucked his wife in real life it's just it 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 all comes together in such a great way i loved it loved it i did too i feel like we skipped over a lot of the themes but it's like hard to talk about on the first one yeah we got into it enough and there's there's greater minds than us to discuss exactly we're a bunch of idiots why are you listening to us we're the best podcast turn this podcast off right now listen to someone else i will say my favorite scene is probably the scene when you first meet the videotape guy it's he's terrifying (laughs) He is terrifying. When he has some calls on house, that scene genuinely like stuck with me. It's so incredibly well delivered. All the video cameras, the videotape stuff, very thoroughly creeped me yeah. out too. Mm-hmm. And like John said, the like glitches in the system were very unsettling to me. And the shots and of the highway were very creepy. Love. And just, he's just Lynch. Just is so good at creating like soundscapes i mean his yeah. the best example of that is obviously a racer head which is some of the sound design in this movie was <laughs> kind of eh, i thought i just i never i think yeah, his i think, I think his sound the punching was... sounds sound the stock punching sound oh. I, I, although i guess that was played for comedy so i don't have a yeah that's not like taking off points or anything but like i just think no, he's his so sound creative. design is amazing he's he's the best i love him the way he plays with like lights and darkness is the best. Very effective, I think. And the highway shots would be examples of this. Oh yeah, the shot sim- when he's he on the wa- sim- He has similar shots in Twin Peaks of like lights in the forest, and it's very oh, and people because cre- you feel you feel very isolated with mm-hmm. these shots, and it's very unsettling. Yeah, and there's a shot where like he veers off the road and it's just like a man standing there in the oh, shadows. Horrifying. It's just like yeah. oh, God, he's so good at creating this imagery. I don't I don't have much else to say. I mean I don't pretty know. glowing review here. Yeah, me too. Just watch it, honestly. Just fucking just watch fucking watch well I would hope they have watched it. I would it say really spoiled it. If you haven't seen a ton of other movies, maybe don't start with this one from Lynch. Start with do. It doesn't matter. Movie. No, um, I think. Yeah, I start know, with I Inland think. Empire. Yeah, that's a good starter. That's a good uh, sampler. And then you go immediately to the final season, Twin Peaks. Not the first season, not the second. Yeah, the skip final. the first. Start. Season. You gotta start. You gotta start the last episode, though. Work go your back. way back through his catalog. We should do a <laughs> Twin Peaks: The Return podcast. Nick, does, Nick, Nick hasn't, Nick hasn't seen watched it. it. You're crazy. That's his. Nick hasn't that's literally seen his Lynch's, best thing. That's literally Lynch's masterpiece, and you haven't seen it. Is it better than Eraserhead? Yes. yes. It's you can. It's a. It's an 18 hour epic. It's so good. It's perfect. You would love it. You got it. I do it. plan on watching it soon. I just have. I plan on rewatching it when I. I plan on watching it when I rewatch Twin Peaks with my girlfriend. Twin Peaks does a series is so good, but like nothing is better than season three. I told you guys before you watched it. Okay, then watch fucking season three then. I will. Damn. Bitch. 
Is this the Twins cast? No. I'm gonna recommend gonna just. It. I'm gonna recommend just episode eight. Did I tell? Sure. Did I tell you the little bo- the box that I got came with a disc that just had the pilot of season one and then episode eight of season three on it. What a and, like, nice! What Blue a great Ring. double feature. I know. I'm I'm trying to watch those back to back. Episode eight is literally like its own movie. It's got a light. It's so unbelievable that it aired I, on live television. I know. I just wish I could have like been there, like to see the reactions to that, like live. Yeah, I wish I would have watched it as it came like, out. The and, like, theories, being like going able back to, and, like, uh, to like contribute to the com- online communities and because stuff about the theory, it. Would be so fun. Yeah, it became this like cultural thing, especially because like not like a crazy amount of people were watching it. Um. Yeah, I wish I was around for that. I wasn't born yet. Um, so. Yeah, me too. I was. I'm 28 years old. <laughs> anyway, scores? 8 out of 10. 9 out of 10. I'll go 9. 9 out of 10. Sure. Favorites. Yeah. Lost I'm going to shock all of you. Lucy. I'm kidding. Lost Highway. Lost Highway is my favorite. Um, my favorite is the Lucy 2 sequel I'm pitching. She reaches 200% brain capacity. <laughs> and she has a space battle with the um, child from 2001. Space no, with Life. the vampires from Life Force. They're in it too. They would lose. They're lame. They can get killed by a fucking and- stick. Bill Pullman. Directed by David Lynch. Yeah. Bill Pullman's in there somehow. <laughs> That's Lucy 2. Lucy 2. Gary two, Busey cameo. Lucy 2 directed by David Lynch. Now that's something I would kill to see. He's like, I'm, I said I was retired, but I'm back. <laughs> I'm back for one more, baby. Imagine Lucy David two. Lynch. Lucy 2. And they call it Lucy in the Sky with diamonds. <laughs> that could be good. Oh, wait, no, Lucy in the Sky. Yeah, is wait, didn't they make a movie called Lucy in the Sky? I yeah. said, but I, Lucy in the Sky with Lynch. Lucy in the that. Sky, parentheses, Lucy 2, she returns. This time it's 200%. Lucy 200%. <laughs> this time it's personal. Too fast, too Lucy. 200%. Or no, Lucy Goosey. They call Lucy Goosey. Anyway. This is great material. This is Lucy, awesome. Lucy the first human. Um, I doubt you guys. I doubt you guys know what your next episode, your next movies are, because you're idiots. So no, I changed mine. Why don't you go fuck yeah. yourself, Nick? What's okay. your you, huh? Do you know well, what Nick it is? picked a nice Until easy watch world. for us. Nice Nick. <laughs> Until the end of the world. Yeah. It has nice. to be the five hour cut. It's yeah. We're not watching the two and a half hour baby cut. Wim Wonders, right? Yeah, I never, I've never seen a Wim Wenders work. I almost I watched I Wings. S- I had the only film I didn't watch for my religion and film class last semester was Wings of Desire. I started Pina, and I. Pina. I'm not that big into interpretive dance. Okay. So um, watch most of it. Are we Carter, what's yours? I picked. I made a last-minute switch, and we can I do a movie it. recommendation, Nick. Sure. Yeah, I'll do a movie that. recommendation too. Uh, Umberto D. Okay. I know, directed by. Directed by Vittorio D. Sica. Is there any reason you're picking this? Or? Uh, it's one of the most highly rated movies of all time. So. Oh, so you're a sheep. Sounds I like just want to see. I, I know nothing about it. It's just I, okay. I picked. I think um, it's an Italian neo-realist film. So sounds boring as hell. All yeah, right. Whatever. Go to hell. I picked, and I'm gonna need some. I hope I can pronounce this right. <laughs> um. I picked Uncle Boon Me, who can recall his past lives by. I know it's a peach pong. I don't know what his last name. Weiras, Weiras is that cool? It, he's usually just known by a, a peach pong, I think. So, 
Yeah, He's Uncle Boonmi, who can recall his past lives. Sure, be a good episode. It's mm-hmm. certainly going to be. I don't think any of these movies are like mainstream popular yeah. ones. So. Eh, until the end of the world is fairly popular. But it's still a fucking five hour movie. I don't know how many. Well, a lot of people saw the theatrical cut, which is two and a half hours. Are we watching the full? No, we're watching. If we're, we're going to watch it, we're watching cut. the five hour version. Wim okay. Wenders full cut. This is, will be the longest yeah. movie we've watched, including Nymphomaniac, I believe. All right. Uh, I'm getting a call from the president elect. Um, he's telling me. Kanye? I'm, he's telling me I'm going to be in his cabinet. He wants me to be Secretary of State, so we're going to have to end this. Oh, um, wait, wait, I just got a text from. Uh, I, I just got a text from the president elect. It said, I'm Secretary of Movies. So, oh, it's like I will. All right, recommend. Uh, Want to just do like something we watched recently that we yeah. liked, or what do you want? Something to- I watched recently. Who wants to go first? You go. You're first. the one who suggested idea. it. Yeah. All right, Come I'll on, do. Uh, I'll do a 2020 release because you know, why not? The Wolf of Snow Hollow, directed by Jim Cummings. I thought it was oh, really the cop good. movie. <laughs> Wow, we see where you stand. All right, Nick. buddy. He's now played a cop in two straight of his own. He's cast himself <laughs> as a cop in two what straight kind movies. What a sick man. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I thought this movie was great, even though Jim Cummings unfollowed me on Twitter. But you know what? What? He followed he you at one point? Yeah, Nick, Nick was so happy. He unfollowed you? Yeah. But I'll uh, be why? I'm a professional. I'll leave Don, this out of it. Don Hertzfeld liked my tweet. I'll say that. Yeah, well, the director of Crank liked my tweet. I don't give a that shit. Said, that was asking for Crank 3, like four and years ago. did he ago. give it to you? Nope. No, he's probably in the, in the studio <laughs> right now cr- working on it. <laughs> you were going to say cranking it out. And yeah, you, I, was I don't gonna, know why I was you stopped gonna. yourself. Um, watch World of Tomorrow 3. That's not my recommendation, but. Anyways, Nick, why do you like your... We're not asking him for a review. Movie. He's just giving no, a it's recommendation. Funny. It's a good well, horror just comedy. Give, just just explain it. why people... Yeah, yeah there's how... nothing funny about police brutality. All right, yeah, buddy? Nick, well, I no know you can laugh people. with your friends, <laughs> but there's nothing funny. Watch it. It's better to know nothing going in, in my opinion. Oh, well, I know something about it. Yeah, I know something about two nuts you can suck. You know what I say? Listen, it's, go it's, review bomb Jim Cummins. You know what's movies. weird about it? It's about Give a wolf. Star, don't watch it's about it. a wolf and there's a piggy in it. Hmm. Is there a connection being made there? Yeah, the only wolves I like is... Little the pig, little pig, street. little pig, little pig, let me in. Does that have, do they say that? To yeah, him? do they say that, Nick? Hey, Mr. Cummings, this is a message to you. Fuck you. My rope's fucking end at this point. You why did you... Fucking edge. Why? Why did? It, why did he unfollow you? I don't know. He saw he was a Trump supporter. He saw it. Yeah. <laughs> he could. Yeah. <laughs> Nick posted his his uh. My ballot. ballot. Um. Kanye 2020. What? <laughs> Joe jo- Joe Jorgensen. What the? <laughs> All right. Um. Who's in, you want to go or me? I, I didn't have this plan. Hold on. I should probably pick something. All right. I'll go. Um, I'll go. Um, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I'm going to recommend Stop Making Sense, which is maybe the most fun movie ever. Um, whether you like the talking heads or not, I couldn't recommend this more. Um, guaranteed to make you tap your feet and just make you happy. It. On second viewing, it launched into my top ten of all time. I just love it. No other movie makes me feel. Was this movie made by David Lynch? Because his movies make no sense. David Byrne. Close. Who? David Byrne's in it. You just got burned. But yeah, um, it also it did make me a little sad because I was like, damn, I'm not gonna be able to go to a concert for 
um maybe ever ever and also like it's all about like just hanging out with your friends and making art and i also don't know when i'll ever be able to do that so it bummed me out in that sense but still recommend it highly carter or should i say lucy because you're looking through to try to find i know you've got all the information in the world you should be able to jesus christ but i'm going fuck it i'm Go check out if you're interested. Oh, fuck. What a great episode, glitching? Guys. Are you glitching? I'm, I'm about glitching. to cut you off. My brain's at like 5% right now. We could, me and Nick could recommend a second movie. I have another one I could recommend. Hold up. I got, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend two movies. Same go in brand blinds. Brand. Go in blind and watch Sleepaway Camp. Go in blind. That's all I'm gonna say. Sleepaway Camp is so fucking good. Oh, that ending! Yeah. Holy shit! That movie blew my mind. I've not seen Sleepaway Camp. Similar to Sleepaway Camp, I'm going to be all right. Great episode, guys. Um, we will see you next week. Friday. Because you're gonna recommend a dumb Friday the Thirteenth. Friday the Thirteenth. Shit about. Part four, the final chapter, is the best one. Followed ever so closely by Jason Lives Part Six. I completely agree. Uh, I know these are all those. That's not a controversial opinion at all. That those two are the best. And I have not finished the franchise yet, so maybe I'll be blown away by something in the future. But uh, Part Four and Part Six are two fucking excellent slasher movies. Um. Some watch, of the best. I saw the movie. watch it with your whole family. They'll all yeah, love some it. of the best ever. Starring uh, the guy from Lucy. If you're looking to have some fun time with the bros, go watch. Go double feature Friday the 13th, double part feature, four and six. Um, so Lucy good. And I saw the devil. And I'm starting to think Jason okay. kicks ass in both of them. Are you done? Yes. <laughs> Christ almighty. <sighs> All right, let's well, wrap this shit up. I guess that's it. Our last episode. Thank you guys been great. for sticking <laughs> with us. It's been great. Um, but we're hanging it up. We're hanging up. That's going to sound great. It's going to be this. really going to love to... Up. The old the, podcasting uh, hat. I mean, I'm going to have to go. A lot of work with Biden. I'm All right. I have to be picking a lot of movies for him. What do you think Biden's favorite movie is? We're going to say that and then I'm going to end the recording. I'm going to go with Shawshank. I'm going to go with. Because it proves we can all be cuties. It's almost 100% Forrest Gump. Um, and with that, we'll see you next week. <laughs>